Hello, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Azukis, and I will be presenting in-service teachers' perceptions of online learning, an action research study of online learning curriculum in a graduate course. This study is part of a five-year project to examine the effectiveness of curriculum for K-12 online learning. The curriculum was implemented in a graduate level course, which was one of five courses required for the state's educational technology teacher certification endorsement. The research questions were one, what are in-service teacher perceptions of K-12 online learning? And two, how should those perceptions impact future curriculum design? The study took place in a large public research university in an urban area in a Midwestern state. The study occurred in an online graduate level course and the participants included the graduate students enrolled in that course who granted permission for their data to be used in the study. The course included seven weeks of online content which focused on the different roles involved in K-12 online education which included designer, teacher, and facilitator. The course curriculum was based on the following curricular materials, good practice to inform Iowa learning online case studies. The teacher education goes into virtual school or TEGVIS scenarios, which were designed to explore the role of the online facilitator and local versions of the case studies um, based on online teachers in this particular Midwestern state. Data um, were collected in the form of learner reflections to readings and case studies, which took the form of blog posts. Learner interactions, which included peer-to-peer -peer comments on those blog posts, student uh, collaborative projects, and course evaluations. Data were analyzed using grounded theory, and four key themes emerged. The first focused on the benefits and challenges of online learning. Students perceive the benefits to be enhanced equity and flexibility, as well as the ability to promote enhanced communication, primarily between teacher and student, but also among students. Um, this quote is indicative of some of the conversations um, that students were having. Uh, many students have very little and in some cases no access to AP courses. By offering courses online, we open up the availability of a strong education to more students. Is that not our goal in a democratic education system? Equal educational opportunities. Uh, there were also some perceived challenges which included a lack of social interaction if the student were only taking courses online. There was some concern that if there were no um, regular face-to-face -face courses or if a student did not have an opportunity to participate in face-to-face -face extracurricular activities, um, that that could promote um, a lack of social interaction, which would be problematic. Um, the graduate students were also worried that online learning could potentially result in the need for fewer teachers, um, as it was their perception that an online teacher might be able to serve larger groups of students, um, therefore necessitating um, fewer teachers in the field. The third perceived challenge was online classroom management and discipline. They believed that the online world might present unique classroom management challenges and would require a totally different set of classroom management skills. Um, and I think we're seeing this a little bit um, with remote learning. I work with educational um, leaders in a doctoral program, um, and many of them are dealing with um, classroom management and discipline issues in the remote learning environment that um, they had not um, thought of uh, prior to uh, the pandemic's uh, you know, requirement of remote learning. What is interesting, if we contextualize these findings with those of the first three years in the study, is that there seems to be some evolution of views about communication and interaction. Um, as more materials, particularly case studies, were added to the course, um, it seems that students became more accepting of um, the type of communication that could uh, occur in the online environment, uh, particularly because in a face-to-face um, -face, uh, large classroom of you know, 25 to 30 students, 
um, it's easy to get lost in the shuffle. And the students began to understand over time through their exposure to these case studies and the courses um, that in fact, in the online environment, um, the teacher might have more direct communication with the student um, than in the face-to-face -face environment. Um, the other thing that's interesting, if you look at the study over time, it seems that as the graduate students' um, knowledge seemed to grow or increase as more information and data were available for them to study in the course, this also raised their level of concern regarding the need for additional training related to classroom management and um, online learning. So whereas that was not mentioned at all in the first two years, it began to be um, mentioned tendentially in the third year and then became um, an identified uh, theme in this fourth year of study. The next theme um, focused on the factors necessary for success of online learning. The graduate students perceived that students needed support in order to be successful in the online and learning environment. And some of the things that they discussed or suggested included the fact that the course need, really needed to have quality instructional design um, so that it would be easy to navigate and understand um, the content as well as the requirements for participation and submitting assignments. Um, they also discussed the importance of student orientation programs or student, student orientation um, courses. And then the other thing that was mentioned was how um, online facilitators um, could be very helpful to online teachers and to students in supporting them in their online courses. Parental involvement was also viewed as important to student success, particularly um, among younger students. Finally, the students perceived that there would be challenges related to academic integrity. Um, questions such as, how can you be sure that the student is the one doing the work? Um, and you know, what, what do you do when a student has access to the internet while they might be um, taking an assessment? Uh, some students did raise questions about um, whether an assessment is a good assessment if students can look all the answers up um, online. Um, they also um, put forth some different suggestions. Um, this is an example of that. My greatest fear of online courses is that the person taking a test may not be the person taking the course. Maybe they can incorporate a webcam that records the user only during test time. This might help, but I'm sure someone would figure out a way to get around that too. Um, we um, at my university currently have this technology available through our um, learning management system, and we do have some faculty um, that are using that with um, higher education online students. But I believe this is a challenge um, that has come up uh, recently related to remote learning as well. Um, so in this particular study, um, the students thought that teachers and students would need some additional support to promote academic integrity in order for the online learning to, to be successful. Um, and if we look at contextualizing this data, um, in year one, um, there, and we'll see this in the next slide, but there was some skepticism about online learning overall. Um, and so they didn't believe that students could be successful in this environment. So the importance of student support was um, a theme that came up for discussion. In year two, there was no mention of the factors needed for success. Um, in year three, um, student support came up um, in the context of the need for strong instructional design. Um, the third theme was the learner ex acceptance of K-12 online learning. In fact, among this particular group, um, it really moved from um, acceptance of online learning to some advocacy um, for making students more aware of the possibilities of online learning. Um, students were concerned that not enough people were aware of the option of online learning um, and students were advocating for more online learning to promote the access and flexibility um, mentioned in theme one. Um, this is an example of um, a student quote, 
Since starting our very own online class, I have become more welcoming of the idea of online classes. It really wasn't until I took the last two online courses through this university that I started to see the real potential in online courses. I was still reserved about using them at the K-12 level, but most of that stemmed from my own misunderstanding. Um, so students were sort of working through um, some of the myths or mis misconceptions um, that they had about online learning. And as I said, they really moved um, you know, into a place of acceptance and in some cases into a place of advocacy um, for students to take online learning. And if we look at this, Contextually over the three years, um, as the course continued to be updated with additional materials, um, particularly um, local case studies and data related um, to uh, the uh, proficiency and efficacy of online learning in the state seemed to promote more acceptance among the graduate students over um, the different cycles. In year one, the students were particularly skeptical of online learning. Um, in year two, acceptance did not emerge as a, theta, a theme in the data analysis. And in year three, student acceptance of K-12 online learning um, was mentioned again, uh, and then even more strongly again in, um, in this year four study. The final theme was self-efficacy for teaching online. This was the first time this emerged as a theme. Students expressed confidence um, in being able to facilitate an online course um, to help students work through an online course that someone else was teaching. Um, students felt somewhat less efficacious about teaching online um, themselves. And these are a couple quotes from um, the data. I feel pretty confident in being able to support a student at my school through an online course. I think that I could engage the student to complete an online course successfully. Um, whereas another student reported, I would have to have a lot of training and be mentored by an experienced online teacher to feel confident about teaching an online class. Uh, in terms of implications for future course design, um, there were several implications for course design. Learners expressed the desire for a better understanding of how schools marketed themselves. And again, this was related to the idea that, um, you know, students were missing out on these opportunities for equity, access, and flexibility um, because they just didn't know about online learning options in the state. And so it was suggested um, that the course could include some um, sample marketing materials or some discussion um, of how online schools made their courses um, or th made the knowledge of their courses available um, to local school districts or may have partnered with local school districts um, to address this desire for having a better understanding um, of how um, K-12 students would know about online learning opportunities. Um, learners responded positively to readings about the implementation of online learning in the state. Um, this seems to be a theme over time, and as more case studies become available, the addition of updated readings um, highlighting online learning in the state was recommended. Case studies that demonstrate instructional design and teacher practices to reduce anxiety in online courses. Um, and this comes back to the idea of student support. Um, as well as some of the factors related to success for online learning. Um, in this particular year, there was a case study that was added that focused on um, student anxiety, and it, that really keyed students into the fact that um, students might need more support with this transition to online learning. Um, and so it was recommended um, that more focus be placed on student support and how to reduce um, teacher anxiety and possibly even um, student anxiety and possibly even teacher anxiety um, in online courses. So just some um, final concluding thoughts, um, key points. Acceptance of online learning grows over the four-year period with some students actually moving into the realm of advocacy for online learning. Um, the prompt addressing student anxiety may have prompted discussion about site mentors, parental involvement, and instructional design. As depth of understanding develops, more nuanced questions and concerns um, develop among the students. 
um, the more they know about online learning, the more they realize they need to know, right? Or would um, express that they would have to have more intensive training to be able to teach an online course. And then finally, self-advocacy emerged as a theme for the first time, which might be a natural connection um, between their course content and their ability to apply these learnings to their daily teaching um, lives. Um, or that as acceptance of online learning grows, they're beginning to imagine themselves potentially in a situation where they're an online teacher. Um, so they're really beginning to think about their preparedness um, uh, for, for that role. Um, thank you very much. Um, and I will now take um, any uh, questions that you may have uh, or comments uh, about this study.